Uh, okay, today our presentation is about how to detect synchronization bugs in CUDA program. So uh, CUDA is the most popular GPU computing platform and focused by NVIDIA. You can see the basic flow here. First, we start the application and we're searching for devices. We're loading data to host, we allocate device memory, copy data to device. And most importantly, we have a kernel function. The basic idea is that it allocates resources on CPU side and executes kernel function on GPU side. So which is our target to detect synchronization bugs? So CUDA enables a three-layer structure to manage threads, where multiple threads are managed by a block and multiple blocks are managed by a grid. As a result, CUDA needs a mechanism to synchronize different threads. So could I enable barriers same threads to synchronize blockwise threads where a same threads wait until all threads within the same block has reached the executing command. The barrier function synchronization mechanism is to prevent a thread from executing unless all threads within the same block have all reached the same barrier function, as we can see here, when the three of the threads within the same block has reached a um, barrier function and it proceeds all together. So actually, we have three types of synchronization bug. The first one is data race. We have uh, the with the order for read and write action or read write and write actions from two or more threads cannot be determined in good programs. We call this bug a data race. We have an example here. Suppose thread one writes data to this memory address and thread thirty three writing data to the same memory address, and we cannot determine with the order. We say there's a data race here. So uh, what is barrier divergence? When more than one thread belonging to the same block complete their task and leave the barrier while some other threads in the same block have not reached the barrier yet, we also have an example here. From line 1 to line 6, they are within an if block, and thread 1 can reach this barrier function while thread 33 cannot. We call this one is barrier divergence. So what about redundant barrier function? A redundant barrier function is redundant when no data is triggered after delaying it. We can see here we delay the bare function at line 4 and nothing happens, no synchronization bugs. So there are multiple automatic detection approaches for CUDA synchronization bugs, but heavy weight, uh, for example, based on SMB solver like Barracuda 3D and limited in back types like curl or LD that you can only detect data race bug. So can we build a lightweight approaches for automatically detecting multiple CUDA synchronization bug type? So here is our approach simulee. We designed two components for simulee. One is input generation part, which uses evolutionary programming to find input that can trigger more memory conflicts to expose dangerous parts for the detection part to construct a memory model for detecting it. So in the input generation part, we need a finished function to short, to short each solution in order to get the optimal. The finished function is defined as follows. So this function takes dimension and arguments as input. GI refers to a, a function that returns 1 when the i's memory address is accessed by any thread and returns 0 otherwise. And FI returns the number of threads that access the i's memory address. So uh, the star and n denotes the memory access ranges. So the smaller the finished function is, the higher chance the memory access conflict takes place. So here is our mutation part. First, we're mutating argument here. So as we can see, we're tracing and mutating memory access related arguments for deriving the optimal solution. We can see here strider, strider, strider. We can see the strider can actually inflate the memory address, so we choose strider to mutate. So in case the optimal solution is close and we use the normal distribution to let the strider increase a little bit, so in case the optimal solution is far, we generate offside by cosy distribution to make the strider bigger. So we actually follow a different strategy when we're mutating dimensions. Oh, here this this type we call it dimension because it is a memory access related dimensions. So actually, we randomly generating a step vector ranging from minus one to one according to the dimension size and adding it to the original dimensions. So in order to construct memory model, we have to define unit tuple first. So unit tuple is used to record the memory access information made by a single thread. 
A memory unit is corresponding to a single memory address which contains multiple unit samples. The visit order is created by bare function only. We can see that you, you, all your access records are stored in your memory unit. So after we have uh, the memory unit, we can make in the detection strategy. For data arrays, suppose we have 5i and 5 joys, two unit tuples, and the visit order is the same. The thread ID isn't, and they one of them have write actions. So when the thread of five i and five j are from different thread maps, they actually have some data rates. So there's a multiple situation here, but I, I suggest you to review the paper to find out more details. So for memory divergence can be detected during constructing memory access model when there is any health in thread after the ground execution is terminated, or two threads end up at different variable functions. And for redundant bearing function, we group in other UB turtles with advanced busy order to find out whether any data race can take in place. So we actually collect real-world projects as our benchmark and comparing the performance between simulate and state-of-the-art projects. So we can see here the simulate in the identified box set, we can see the simulate, simulate can detect 21 bugs and fails 3 and no false positive. Why are the GP verified? GPLE and GPC and race tracker, they also fail a lot of bug. And for GP verified, they have six false positive. And, and this type of the other two, they also have some timeout. For unknown bugs, the simulator can detect all of the unknown bugs uh, with reporting three false positive, while the other approaches, they have a less performance comparing to the Simulate because simulate can detect more real world bugs. It is uh, designed for the real world. So ten of the unknown bugs uh, detected by simulate has been confirmed by developers. We actually have. We also have some replies from developers. You can refer to the paper to get more details. So summary to the best of our knowledge, we propose the first idea that using the evolutionary search to detect CUDA synchronization bug and implement this idea to a lightweight, fully automatic offline detection tools. And this tool has detected 24 unknown bugs, and 10 of them have been confirmed. Okay, thank you.